Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to calculate load history deflections and check your slab for deflections in RAM concept. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on reviewing our sample model and setting up our load history criteria. Before we begin, let's also go ahead and discuss understanding our load history deflection calculations that will be performed in RAM concept. RAM concept calculates load history deflections using a rigorous approach based on detailed time dependent curvature calculations on the concrete slab cross sections. These rigorous calculations consider the following behaviors that influence the long term concrete deflections, including material nonlinearity, early age concrete strength, cracking, tension stiffening, creep, shrinkage, internal restraint to shrinkage from the reinforcement, external restraint to shrinkage from stiff supports, and also the load history of the slab. Now before we begin our workflow for setting up our criteria, let's also take a look at our sample model. And the areas I want to draw your attention to are the areas that may need a little extra attention when calculating deflections. Now that we have reviewed the model geometry, let's also take a look at the loading and understand how the loading should be closely related to your load history deflection calculations. For this particular elevated slab, we're going to consider the construction sequence of the project as it will be built in the field. Now for this structure, we're going to assume that there are different stages in the lifespan of the concrete slab including when the formwork will be removed, when the floors above will be cast, uh, when the cladding will be installed, and then the final lifespan of the structure. To consider those different stages in the deflection calculations, we've gone ahead and set up our load cases and some load combinations to reflect those stages of construction. Now for this particular model, we've gone ahead and set up some load cases that are particular to these stages in the construction sequence, including the other dead loading and live loading, which are basically going to be used for the permanent existence of the slab, and then also some cladding and construction live load, which will be used in those different stages in the construction sequence. Now to understand that a little bit better, let me go ahead and close the load cases, and I'm also going to take a look at the load combinations. This is where setting up your model will be important when attempting this workflow in RAM concept. So if I go to the criteria menu, I'm going to take a look at my load combinations that I've set up. Now I'm going to reference these load combinations in my load history deflection criteria. So good familiarity about the load combinations and setting up load combinations that represent the different stages in the construction process will be important. For this particular model, I've already gone ahead and set up several different load combinations that will represent different stages in that construction sequence, including when the formwork will be removed, when the floor above will be cast, when the construction loading will be applied, and so forth. Now that we've reviewed the load cases and the load combination information that has been specified in this particular model, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the load history criteria. To access that information, let's go to the criteria item in the main menu, and we will select load history. Now for this particular model, I've gone ahead and coordinated the construction sequence with my RAM concept model, and it would be important to have these discussions on your models uh, as you are 
considering this workflow. For this particular model, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my load history steps. To add a load history step, you're going to go ahead and click on the Add Load Step option. You can enter the load history step information and then reference a load combination. You're also going to enter the duration in days, which will then have, allow the program to calculate the total age of the slab. So I've already gone ahead and considered all those different stages within my construction sequence for this particular model. I've already gone ahead and referenced in their load combinations and considered when the duration will be. Now the duration will be specific to days after pour. So for example, when my form work is removed, I'm assuming that's going to be seven days after the concrete slab is poured. So I put seven days into this field. Now, as a special note, each load history step will represent an applied load combination for a specific duration of time. Each load history step is solved in sequence, taking into consideration the effects from all previous load history steps. Now, at this point, since I have now reviewed my sample model and specified my load history criteria, I'm ready to move on to the next step in my workflow. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.